to AC Fundamentals with Dr. Ken again. Uh, we're up to part three, the sine wave. We're now going to start to look at a sine wave with a little bit of detail. And you'll notice here on the screen we have a sine wave rotating around a horizontal zero. So you can see my cursor is here, just moving around. That's the zero, the horizontal. You can see the sine wave itself being traced out and this time we're using the analogy of a pendulum swinging backwards and forwards to represent where we are on the sine wave. So you can see here at this first position um, the pendulum is in the vertical then it swings away to the right then it swings away to the right at its maximum at the next position then it begins to swing back then it comes back to the zero position then it swings negative a bit more negative, then it starts to swing back towards zero and then again comes to rest in the zero position. Now you'll notice the pendulum motion does trace that of a sine wave. The pendulum stops has zero velocity at the points where it changes direction. So here, here where my cursor is and finally here at the end are the three places on this drawing where it stops and there's no velocity. The velocity of the pendulum as, is at its maximum as it swings through the rest or zero position. So the, you'll notice the steepness of the curve is the steepest here and across here and here. So that's what it's saying with a sine wave at these crossing points or what we actually call the zero crossing points are uh, where the change is the greatest. Across the very top you'll notice very little change. It gets higher and higher, flattens out and then starts to decrease and up the top here increase, increase and then flattens out and then de starts to decrease again. So the thing we need to note about a sine wave is it is constantly changing. Here's the problem. We've got voltages which are both changing in magnitude and their direction. So we're going, magnitude's getting bigger positive, and then it's getting smaller back to zero, and it's going negative. So the voltage is changing both in its magnitude and in its direction all the time. Hence, that's why we describe it as being a complex quantity. So how is this particular um, sine wave created. So let's look at a generator and on the screen here you can see we have a generator with four positions. We have magnetic field rotating around inside a fixed coil of wire which is exactly how most generators are built. And then we have an ammeter measuring the current and you can see a lamp indicating how much current is flowing by the brightness of a lamp. And finally, on our, underneath of our drawing, you can see we've plotted the sine wave of the voltage. So let's take the first generator. Let's have a close look at that generator. You'll notice that the uh, magnetic field is horizontal and the magnetic flux is actually in parallel with the coil. So this top bar and this bottom bar of the coil, the flux is all in parallel. So there's no actual flux cutting the conductors. As you can see, the lamp is not illuminated because there's no current flowing. The ammeter is telling us there's no current flowing because there's no voltage or potential being generated as the lines of magnetic flux cut the conductors. Therefore, we're not getting any current and that, of course, represents the zero position. If we now rotate our magnetic field, so we have the south pointing up and the north pointing down, we've got the maximum amount of flux cutting the inductor at the top and at the bottom. So you can see here our ammeter has deflected, in this case to about half an amp, in the positive direction. Our light globe is glowing nice and brightly and we've rotated up to the middle of the waveform. So we've rotated to 90 degrees and we've rotated our magnetic field through 90 degrees. 
Let's now move to diagram 3 or C and we've rotated our magnetic field another 90 degrees but look we're horizontal we're horizontal in the opposite direction but again no magnetic field is cutting the inductor top or bottom hence light globe is not shining not illuminated and there is no current flow and then we project down we're back at the zero crossing point on our wave then we rotate through a, another 90 degrees and you'll see our magnetic fields are now cutting maximum amount of flux top and bottom of our coil but in the opposite direction so the lamp is glowing positive but the needle is pointing to the right and you can see we've got minus half an amp flowing and project that down and we're at the maximum negative point at 270 degrees and if we were to rotate round another 90 degrees we would be back at the beginning which is the same as the 360 degree point so you can see here as a magnetic field rotates around inside the coils of the generator we're generating both a voltage that gains a magnitude both positive and a magnitude that goes negative but it is also a magnitude generated over 360 degrees the zero crossing points at zero degrees 180 and 360 which is also zero for the next cycle etc the maximums always happen at 90 degrees and 270 so that gives you an idea of why we generate a sine wave it is simply a function of rotating a magnetic field around a and through an in Conductor in the generator. That's how it's generated. It's all got to do with spinning a magnetic field. So, what's the difference between AC and DC? Now, we've already looked at that a little bit, and uh, I've got a video for you to look at. Again, I can't run the video here on the video on the PowerPoint presentation because it won't come up but I've put it in the uh, learning space so you can click on the link um, AC versus DC a great little video it only runs for about three or four minutes and uh, really does explain the difference between a voltage which stays constant and one that is constantly changing and of course I've put a little bit of the history of uh, AC versus DC and here's Tesla and Edison Edison was very pro DC and actually uh, built the first DC system you can see here in a time graph you've got Thomas Edison he was uh, into DC he lived between 1847 and 1931 and George Westinghouse who bought Nikola Tesla's patents and uh, they were the proponents of AC and uh, during what was called the current wars um, eventually AC won out because it is far far more practical and efficient and easier to use than DC in most applications So, a sine wave is obviously is related to a circle. So, a sine wave can be constructed from a circle. So, if you were to take a circle and uh, start it on the left-hand side here at zero degrees and rotate around, and you were to project, say, at 30 degrees and mark at 30 degrees on the horizontal, so effectively we're taking the circumference of the circle and laying it out on the horizontal, and then projecting the points of the circle onto the vertical and then plotting the sine wave so here we're taking 30 degrees and then connecting it to 30 degrees on the horizontal we get that point we take 40 degrees 45 degrees on the circumference and go to 45 degrees on the vertical so on and forth so forth at 90 we get our maximum positive and again at 180 there is nothing that was 
my fault. And then when we go negative, as we come down to 210, we can get 210. Then we get 225 down to 270 at our minus negative peak. But the thing I wanted to point out to you here is that if you take that vertical point, say on the 30 degrees where my cursor is, and go straight down, it actually forms a right angle triangle. And because we have this right angle triangle and we have this trigonometrical ratio, particularly round sine, but we also have cosine and tan which allows us to use some trigonometry to do calculations around electrical circuits. So let's have a look at that a little more closely. Here's a reminder of trigonometry. Now, if you have one of Ken's fantastic equation sheets, version 3, you actually have these th three sine, cosine and tangent equations already printed on the sheet. If in my day you had to remember Sokotoa to be able to remember that uh, sine is the opposite on the hypotenuse, cos is the adjacent on the hypotenuse, and tan is opposite on the adjacent. I had a student the other day ask me, how do I know which is which? And that is a very fair question. Sometimes we jump over trigonometry and forget to explain. So if we have it have a right angle triangle, and by the way, this only applies to right angle triangles, does trigonometry. If we have a right angle triangle, if you can see where my cursor is, and we're looking for the sine of this angle, then the opposite is the opposite to the angle. The adjacent is that which is adjacent, this side to the angle. And the hypotenuse is always the top or the closing in of the triangle. So you can see here on cosine, it's the adjacent, which is the one that's beside the angle, not the one that's opposite over here. So it's adjacent on hypotenuse. So if we were looking for the top angle here, so if we're looking for where my cursor is now, then this would be the adjacent and down here would be the opposite. So it just depends which angle in the triangle we're looking for. Now in electrical theory, almost always we're looking for the angle of the hypotenuse from the horizontal. From the horizontal. It might be horizontal negative in this direction. It might be horizontal positive. But it's an important thing to remember that when we're looking for the sine of the angle or the cosine of the angle, we look at where the angle is and then the opposite is the side directly opposite the angle or adjacent to the angle. I'm not going to go through all the formulas here, but uh, I would suggest you do some practice on your calculator to make sure you can find the sine of an angle. It's just a ratio, by the way. It's a ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse, and it gives us the angle. If you have the ratio and you want to find the angle, it would be sine to the minus 1 and then put the angle in, or the ratio in, and it will give you the angle. So why don't we do a quick little example here. We have a triangle to our right hand here. It has 30 degrees. It is a right angle triangle. Its hypotenuse is 10. And we've been asked to find x, find the height of the triangle. So we know it's 30 degrees. They tell us it's 30 degrees. The hypotenuse is 10. So the information we have is theta is 10, the sorry, theta is 30 degrees, the hypotenuse is 10. So the equation is the opposite equals the sine of the angle multiplied by the hypotenuse. So we simply put in sine is equal to 0.5, either from our calculator or our tables, so x.5 times 10 gives us 5. Of course, on your calculator, you'll be able to put that straight in, that sine theta multiplied by 10, and it will come back with the answer 5. I'd suggest you pause your the video here, 
and just make sure you can do a few of those trigonometrical functions. I can guarantee you a couple of these will come up in the assessment and I cannot believe that half the students get a simple question like this wrong because they've not practiced or not bothered to look at the equation sheet to make sure they get the right um, sine, cos or tan for the problem that needs to be solved. So finally, the height of each triangle in the circle is the height of the waveform of that angle. The height is found with trigonometry. So here's just what I was saying earlier. They've just done um, half a circle in this particular case. We've done the top half a semicircle. And again, we've, we've plotted the circle itself against the circle circumference over here on the horizontal where my cursor is. We've plotted out the sine wave. And you can see here at 30 degrees, there is a triangle. And I can guarantee you that angle from the horizontal is 30 degrees. This one in here is 45, this one is 60, this one is 90, so on and so forth. So again, because a sine wave creates this lovely relationship between a circle and the sinusoidal shape of the wave, we're actually dealing with right angle triangles, and we can use those right angle triangles to do a little bit of trigonometry, which allows us to do a bit of mental and mathematical modeling around AC circuits, because AC circuits both have magnitude and direction in degrees.